at Saforti Laboratories. We believe we could all use an escape from reality. A vacation from ourselves. A Cinescape. Turned home safely, but forever changed. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, preview event for the Seattle International Film Festival. I'm Carl Spence, the Artistic Director, and we are very excited to launch this festival, which starts on May 15th. Uh, we announced our lineup to the press today, so we can actually talk to, about a lot of things. Um, to all of you, uh, but uh, I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to turn it over to uh, two of my colleagues, but I will tell you a few things. I don't know if you've heard a few of the announcements, but our, our opening film is Jimmy All's By My Side, uh, and that's uh, with uh, Andre Benjamin starring as Jimi Hendrix, directed by John Ridley. John Ridley will be here for the opening night. We're closing with a film that was not uh, shot here, but produced by Seattle's own Mel Eslin, and that's the one I love with Mark Duplass and Elizabeth Moss. It's a great uh, comedy, sort of a romantic comedy, but it has sort of a Twilight Zone twist. And the, uh, the latest news I can tell you is that we have, our, uh, we have announced our tribute guests. We'll be honoring um, not only Laura Dern and Chiwetel Ejiofor at the festival with special programs. Uh, we'll be showing Fault in Our Stars with Laura Dern as well as Wild at Heart. Chiwetel Ejiofor will be showing a short he directed as well as uh, a film, and then uh, we've just announced also a special Lifetime Achievement Award presentation to Quincy Jones, who will be attending the festival. And there's there's three programs with that. We're going to be showing a, a film that he scored early in his career, The Pawn Broker by Sidney Lumet. Uh, we're going to be show, showing a film he produced called Keep On, Keep On On, which is about the legendary trumpet player Clark Terry, as well as uh, his latest uh, uh, musician he's mentored. A, a jazz prodigy piano player, Justin Coughlin. And uh, we will, uh, at that screening, we will be presenting uh, Quincy Jones with his award and having a conversation. And then following that, we'll be having a concert at the Triple Door, which Quincy Jones will introduce uh, with Justin Coughlin performing. So it's gonna be a great festival for music and film, which is very fitting for the film and music and interactive happy hour. And with that, and without further ado, it's my great pleasure to welcome Beth Barrett, Director of Programming, and Dustin Casper, our programs man, uh, Education Programs Manager. Hi guys, how's it going? Um, how, and that trailer is amazing. That, that is our friends at Wong Beauty and World Famous, who are terrific, terrific guys to work with, uh, and ladies, of course, um, at, at both organizations. And Dustin, Dustin and I would also like to give a couple of shout outs to festivals that are happening now. Because Seattle is the most amazing place for film, because there are festivals every weekend. There's something to do. There's so many uh, art house cinemas and, and, and places to see film and, and be in film and work in film. Um, uh, Langston Hughes, the African American Film Festival, is still going on. Stiff opens on Friday night. Yeah, exactly. Give them a round of applause. Great guys um, and ladies. And <laughs> Guys is a, a sort of a plural kind of thing. Um, and then Three Dollar Bill is presenting Translations, the Trans Film Festival, um, the first weekend in May as well, which <laughs> apparently is this weekend. Um, the, yeah, it might be next weekend. We've been in a hole. So we have been programming um, amazing films, and uh, we have, haha, this year we are 440 films uh, from 83 countries over 25 days in nine venues uh, here in downtown Seattle and also in Renton, Lincoln Square, and Kirkland. Um, so we are all over the place for a month. Um, we, it's just an amazing, amazing process to go through 
and, and sort down through, um, through uh, the immense amount of films that we consider. These are our actual submissions that just get sent to us. We don't know anything about them. They just get submitted to us. We don't ask for them. Because um, a lot of times, you know, when you've, when you've worked with people, you ask for, you know, you ask to see them, or distributors, or stuff like this. This is just the number of, the sheer number of films that our programmers see in a year. Yeah, that's a little over 3,000. If I've done my math right, mm, yes, I have. A little over 3,000 films. So it's a huge, huge process um, in terms of a festival to go through all of these and to try to put something cohesive together. Um. Well, and, and, and also, and, and Beth, this is just submissions, right? And, yeah. and we, we also have films that we're seeing around the world and, and are doing, doing copious amounts of research on, particularly for the, the international cinema. You know, not everyone in Africa is sending us their films to, uh, to look at, but there's a good deal of, uh, of, of hunting down, doing research, and, uh, and requesting films from uh, a lot of those countries around the world and developing relationships and, uh, and then bringing them to you. So, yeah. So we have 18 programmers that work and uh, 12 pre-screeners that work all year round to bring this together. So, but what does that mean for you guys? Because what we wanna talk about tonight is not the overwhelming amount of numbers or not any, you know, the, you know, the overwhelming amount of just film out there. Digital is a wonderful thing because anybody can make a film, which also means that anybody can make a film <laughs> without thinking. They're like, oh my God, I shot this amazing, you know, picture of a bird and it's a film. And it's like, no, nope, not a film. But you can send it to me, sure. Yeah, I'll look at it. No, I didn't know. He didn't actually have something to say. Um, so what we wanted to talk to, I know, right? We're like, Wee! website goes live tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so but what we wanted to talk to you guys about tonight is not just your films or, or the films in the festival even, but how you guys can maximize your interaction with SIF. It's an, an enormous festival. Again, 25 days, 440 films, just all over the city. Um, and many of you will see a handful of films. Many of you may see 20 or 30 films, which would be fantastic. But there are so many other things to do at festival that can help you in your further career, that can introduce you to people, because you just never know when you're sitting next to somebody in the theater and they're like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm a producer. And you're like, that's so funny. I need a producer. I am a you know, cinematographer. What's going on? What? And you become best friends, and suddenly you've made you know an Academy Award film. That happens. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it absolutely happens. So, how to maximize your festival experience? One, go see films. Nothing makes you a better filmmaker than watching other people's films. There's absolutely nothing in the world that makes you better at what you do than seeing where other people went wrong, or seeing where other people did it much better than you had thought to do it. And it's that kind of being there and having that experience with all these other people and also being looking at it critically. It's like, huh, I never would have thought to, you know, use a crane shot over a canyon for that particular, but it really worked. Can't afford it, but it really worked. Now, how can I change that in my script? Well, and I think there's something to be said, particularly with the international aspect. I mean, you can certainly go and watch U.S. films and, and learn a lot from those just alone. But uh, you know, going around and looking at films from Asia, and, and not just the action movies, but perhaps some, you know, looking at pacing and, and really seeing how different countries and different artists are creating uh, creating art that could in inform the way that uh, that you're working. Uh, I don't think it, you know today is is now a, a fairly universal cinematic world where we're all stealing from each other and uh, and taking ideas. And that uh, I can't stress enough that that opportunity one to to go see something that that perhaps interests you. But uh, I love our, our former managing director, Deborah Person, always recommended to go see, you know, go see a film you want to see, and then go see the film either before or after it as well. And, and just, who knows, who cares if you know anything about it, it might end up being the best film that you see in the festival. And, uh, and for, from my experience going to festivals, those are usually the unexpected, uh, you know, aha moments of that movie was incredible, exciting, you know, special to me. What's the next thing? Passes. Passes. I, I guess I'm talking here. So, uh, uh, you know, there are a variety of ways to get involved in the festival. Obviously, there's tickets that you can uh, that you can pick up to individual films. 
uh, you know, full series passes that can be purchased that give you access to everything you ever wanted to see that, uh, that you know, may be out of your price range, but also might be right in your price range. Um, there are a couple things that, uh, that I wanted to, uh, to give a heads up about, or I guess one, one big thing here. Um, this is something we've been doing for years, and it's kind of you know, one of the better kept secrets in the, in the Seattle world, um, but we do, uh, we do often come to events like this and talk about it, uh, is the Seattle Filmmakers Initiative uh, Accreditation, uh, which is an opportunity for you as filmmakers to connect with, uh, with the, the festival at a fairly, uh, fairly inexpensive price. Um, the, uh, the SFI, the, there are three different sets of passes. 50 bucks gets you the, uh, the like, all, access to all the press screenings. Yeah, of course. No. Can you hold that up for me? Thank you. Um, you know, a, a catalog, a, admission to all the festival forums that are, that are happening, and uh, uh, invitation to the Northwest Connections Party. And then for 100 bucks, it's, you know, everything that came before, a six pack of tickets, an enthusiast level membership, uh, member discount on everything and uh, the SIF industry party and then for, uh, for 150 bucks it's including opening night, two tickets to opening night and uh, the whole gala bash that that's going to be. Um, but it's something that you know no one, no one, even our members gets this kind of deep of, a, of an opportunity kind of discount with it and I'd encourage you to, to jump on that. I know that you know being, being engaged year round as a member uh, is great and, uh, and has the opportunity to uh, to continue kind of deepening your, your experience with, uh, with film in general, who knows. Um, and forums. And, and forums, I, I did mention forums. Oh, the, parties. oh parties are next. Uh, well, there are several parties. Um, including one, uh, one party on the back of this sheet, which is the, the SFI thing. I've also uh, put on some pre-SIF events that I want you guys to know about and are, are accessible to, uh, to you, and in fact free, even. Uh, one of which is the Northwest Connections Local Filmmaker Meet and Greet, uh, which is going to happen on May 7th. Uh, what is that, a week from today? Yes. Um, at, uh, over at Black Rapid and the time, the, we don't know exactly what time it's happening yet, but it, if you're interested, uh, for more information, there's a, you know, questions at SIF.net, shoot an email, and they, uh, they've got all the info to send you. And, uh, and then as well, on May 10th, uh, we're partnering with SAG-AFTRA to do, um, and I, I totally love this, uh, this panel title, uh, films, panels, and parties, how to come back from a film festival with more than just a hangover. <laughs> it is possible. I've done it. Um, the, uh, but it, it's a panel that uh, 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 Basil Hare, Basil Hare, is it Basil Hare? I, I never know. That, that name drives me nuts. I love it. Is it Basil? Wonderful. Good. I got it right, maybe. Um, Tony Dupe, Sean Telford, Sheila Andreen, uh, myself, and moderated by Abby Dillon talking about, you know, what makes sense when you're going out to a film festival. Uh, you know, how, how do you engage, you know, if you don't have a film there, how, how do you really make the most of what you're doing? If you do have a film there, perhaps how to make the most of what you're doing as well. Uh, great opportunity pre-festival and all that info is on the back, uh, the back of that there. And then during the festival, we have festival forums, uh, which are, you know, multiple, oh, sorry, we're going out of order. Do you want to go to parties? We were at parties. We're done with parties. Um, the, uh, yeah, well, no, we're not. You're right. Um, <laughs> festival forums. Every weekend of the festival, there are a variety of opportunities, panels, and, uh, and engaging workshops that are for, uh, for both filmmakers as well as just kind of film enthusiasts as well. Uh, we've got some great partners this year. The Film School is doing a, a trio of workshops on the final uh, June 7th of the festival on... Uh, um, my brain's going to totally fail right now because I'm in front of people. Um, intellectual property and, and kind of lawyer lawyer issues, as well as uh, investors, how, how to how to approach angel investors and uh, a pitch project, uh, how to pitch your project workshop. Uh, all three of which are are looking to be absolutely awesome. Catalyst, our programming of uh, of six feature films that are are made kind of outside of the studio box. Uh, also features a day-long series of panels, which will include the fabulous Steve Edmiston uh, unveiling how to uh, how to make a what is it how, how to make your short film without using your credit card. There you go. Is that what it is? That that is what it is. Uh, what? Yes. <laughs> how to use someone else's credit card? Um, which is uh, quite honestly, big go. That's what we need. And uh, as well as Emily Best from Seed and Spark, the, uh, the, the kind of fund, the crowdfunding and distribution uh, online website, will be here uh, giving a keynote speech uh, as well as a variety of other, uh, variety of other panels. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, all that goes live on the website 
and uh, please do check it out. One thing Dustin mentioned is, you know, how to go to a festival without coming home with a hangover. And everybody thinks, oh yeah, this, that's when you go to other festivals. When you travel and you go and you're a guest and you go to all these other festivals. But SIF is actually no different. You just get to sleep in your own bed. You can actually do all the things that you do at other festivals, well, or somebody else's bed, you know. That could, that could happen too. Um, there are parties. Um, sorry, I got a little distracted there. Um, but you can do everything that you can do at any other festival at SIF. It's just, you know, you get to be in your own hometown, which is an amazing thing. So, um, but now I think uh, we are very, very, very pleased to, um, to talk about Northwest Connections because that is where our heart is. It's, it's the films that are here, the films that are shot here, the films that are made here, the films that are made by people from here. This is an amazing community. We got almost 300 submissions, shorts and features, uh, to just come down to the 44 that we're playing, which is heartbreaking for us um, to have to, like, to have to, to have to do that, um, and to have to send very sad emails to people that we know and love, um, and it kills us every year. But our goal is to try to put together a broad spectrum look at the amazing films that are being made here in Seattle and Western and Eastern Washington, the whole state. Um, and we're very, very proud. We have uh, 17 features and 29 shorts, which doesn't add up to 44, so I'm gonna have to look at those numbers before I say them again in public. <laughs> hey, hey, I can still do math. That is an amazing, amazing thing right now. Um, but no, it's just, it's an extraordinary thing. Our Fly Films program this year was uh, local production companies. Um, it's gonna be super great to see those on the big screen. Um, and we're just really, really proud of all of the things that are going on. I mean, we, we gave a shout out to film festivals that were happening in the next week and in the next two weeks. But that is only a minor part of the film that's happening and the festivals that are happening throughout the entire year um, here in Seattle. There are great ways and great places to show your films. So without further ado, here are Northwest Connections features, which nobody but me can read. <laughs> Apparently, our, our uh, graphic designer, was is, he's a young man with, with very good eyes. <laughs> I'm just going to read the titles. Uh, Four Minute Mile, uh, BFE, Sean Telford's film, Big in Japan from John Jeffcoat, Mark Titus's The Breach, Taylor Goodison's Burkholder, uh, Damnation by a couple of guys uh, uh, that came up to shoot that, uh, Travis Gutierrez Singer's Desert Cathedral, Fly Colt Fly, The Legend of the Barefoot Bandit about Colton uh, Harris Morris, um, Lady Be Good, from our lovely uh, Kay Ray. Uh, Lucky Them, Megan Griffiths is wandering about somewhere out there. Brett Fetzer's My Last Year with the Nuns. Laurel Spellman Smith and Francine Strickreda's Oil and Water. Ryan Wors uh, Worsley's Raising the Bar, because Christensen is running around somewhere. Um, he was involved in that. Jeffrey Brown, uh, produced by Jane Charles. Uh, their film Sold. Ward Serrell's Song of the New Earth. Strictly Sacred, The Story of Girl Trouble, the legendary Tacoma DIY rock band uh, from Isaac Olsen, and a Norwegian film called Two Raging Grannies, about two grannies who are just so pissed off about the economy, and they want to know what somebody is going to do to fix it. Uh, and they live here in Seattle, so they are going to come in their scooters and, uh, and lecture us on the economy. Um, so that is really a great, great, uh, a great number of uh, feature films. Um, and I'm going to just put the shorts up, and then I'm going to read. I'm just, uh, Tony Fulgham's Box Walk, uh, Aaron O'Kay's Diana, uh, Dinosaurs and Seahawks from Linus Phillips, uh, Fresh Pear from Norma Strong B47, one of our fly films, From the Sky, Ian Ebright, The Green Room from Daniel Abram, Hannah and Otto, uh, Chris Volkman, who another one of our fly films, The Hero Pose, Misha uh, Jakubczak, Maikaru from Amanda Harriman, The Maury Island Incident, Scott Schaefer and Stephen Miston over there. Woo! Open Mouth, um, uh, Foreign American Pictures, uh, Fly Film, directed by Randy uh, Walker. Radio Plutus from Steve Dimas. Uh, Revolve, John Behrens. Rotation from Jen George. Sea Folk, another one of our Fly Films, uh, from Morgan, Hen uh, Morgan Henry and Josh Hayward. Secret, Tony Flogham again, one of our world famous Fly Film. Super Secret from uh, the animation... Digipen. Digipen. Uh, where was I there? Oh, tape recorder, Doug Horn, our lovely Doug Horn, right there. <laughs> Ten years later, from Lindy and Chris Brewstead, and we should have coffee sometime. Miley Martinez and Lane Stroud from Real Girls. We also have a handful of Future Wave shorts. These are, are shorts made by young people, um, between 13 and 20. Um, air Pressure, 
City Series Seattle, Listen Up Kids, Max's Last Chance, and While We're Asleep. So give every one of those filmmakers a huge round of applause for getting the work And now you'll be returned home safely, but forever changed. No, now, now is the time when you guys get to ask us questions. Do you guys have questions? Fantastic. Yes, Kay. Thank you for saying that. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Our website will go live. But feel free to tweet out the fact that you are in SIF at any time. Our press launch was this morning, so things are out there in the world. We'd love you to, you know, let all your friends know that this is happening. Yes, Jacob? Uh, uh, what night is opening night? Opening night is Thursday, May 15th. It's going to be a big party. Yeah. Yes, at select Western Washington Starbucks, but pretty much all of the big Starbucks um, in Western Washington, um, I think everyone in Seattle, um, but you get a little farther out and it gets a little, a little more sporadic, but, but Seattle ones. Yeah, PJ. Breast screening start? Breast screening start tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow morning, yep, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, they'll be Thursday and Friday this week, but they are generally Monday through Thursday, 10, noon, and two. Um, so we do, what is that, 12, 12 films a week. So if you've got one of these SF bypasses that let you into press screenings and you had daytimes free, like say you worked at night or from home or whatever, um, you could log an enormous amount of movies for 50 bucks because they go all the way through Thursday, June 5th. So we show about 70, 80 films through press screenings a lot. Thank you guys, and if you have any questions, just questions at sip.net is a great way to get hold of one or both of us, and someone will get back to you. Thanks so much for coming.